I am Caroline, Caroline Rassi, proud principal at Arch Street Public School. I want to take this time to welcome all families to the OCDSB, to your school here at Arch Street, and to the beginning of your child's formal schooling journey. Welcome to kindergarten. I want to take the, I want to start this meeting by acknowledging um, that uh, our learning tonight is taking place on unceded and unsurrendered Algonquin territory. We thank the Algonquin nation for hosting us and I recognize their enduring presence on this land. So what will you learn about tonight? We're gonna start with the message from our director, the director of OCDSB, uh, Camille, uh, and then we're gonna continue with our school community. You'll learn also about the kindergarten program, the extended day programs, transportation, getting ready for kindergarten, programs options, family reception center, and important dates to remember. Our message from the director, the first day of school in kindergarten is the first day of a wonderful road ahead. Let's hear what Director Camille Williams-Taylor has to say to us. That's fantastic uh, message to hear from our director. And just to build up on that, uh, just uh, an encouragement that parents are invited to participate in the day-to-day -day activities of school life by volunteering at your child's school, or at least keeping very close contact, open communication with your child's uh, teacher. And this is a way that you can make a positive difference in your child's education join your school council, find out more about what's going on at your child's uh, school. There are always wonderful uh, and numerous activities that are being planned for, uh, for your child's school year. At the OCDSB, we've got a place for every student and students are why we are here. We are here to serve every uh, student and each one must be seen, 
heard, and it's important that they know that they matter to the OCDSB community. The school board has a strong commitment to human rights, equity, and inclusion. And we continue to work together to dismantle barriers to learning and help all students achieve success. With a focus on human rights and equitable practice, the OCDSB is committed to creating uh, a welcoming and safe space for all students. This is also where we meet the needs of individual students and uh, you know, the needs of each student. So our goal is to meet the unique needs of every child. Our learning support services team is always available to schools to support our early learners. LSTs, that's learning support teachers, psychologists, social workers, speech and language pathologists, as well as educational assistants are dedicated to our kindergarten classes are some of the specialists available for schools. I personally call this team the extended family uh, of a school because they are important resources that we can consult and, uh, and refer to when we ourselves have questions about how to support uh, your child. So if you think that your child may require additional learning support, please talk to your school's principal when you register in order to, sec to secure the supports that your child needs for that school year. We also have indigenous education supports. If you identify as First Nations, Métis or Inuit, you may have access to additional supports for your child. The OCDSB has an indigenous education learning team who you can reach out to for support. The team consists of two instructional coaches, two student support coordinator, coordinators, a graduation coach and a system vice principal. At registration, you can complete the voluntary confidential self-identification. You visit the OCDSB website for details and on resources and support for email, or you can email the vice principal of indigenous education for more information. All schools in the OCDSB are grounded in a community of character and exit outcomes. This is the umbrella over everything that we do. The Ottawa Carleton District School Board's A Community of Character is a set of attributes that were discussed and chosen by a myriad of stakeholders. The purpose of these attributes is to provide a standard of behavior against which all individuals in the OCDSB hold themselves accountable. Our character attributes are the stepping stones to building our community of character. At the OCDSB, our vision of student success goes beyond the classroom. Our goal is to prepare students to be successful in life. And the OCDS exit, OCDSB exit outcomes identify five characteristics and five skills that we are trying to develop in every student. And this work begins in kindergarten. That's where our foundation starts. And we hope that by the time students graduate, they will move confidently into the world, equipped with a strong academic foundation and the learning skills they need to navigate future pathways. Whether that is work, apprenticeship, college, university, or community living. Let's take a look at Arch Street Public School. It's a K-6 English program school, and our day is from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. This year, uh, with the remote uh, learning option at OCV, we currently only have two kindergarten classes, four grades, 
one to six classes, one ASD class, that's an autism uh, unit, autism system uh, support uh, class, and one PSN, that's a primary special needs class. Our office staff include uh, one office administrator, Ms. Karen Hall, one half-time office assistant, Ms. Diane Holmes, and myself, full-time principal. At Art Street, our staff includes 12 classroom teachers, two early childhood educators, three support teachers, five educational assistants, 1.5 office administrators, one chief custodian, one custodian, and one principal. It's a wonderful family. Meet our kindergarten team, where we have Miss Jessica Winters, who is the English kindergarten teacher. We also have Miss Sebi Harashit. Apologies for the lack of a photo here. Uh, we have Miss Lilia Maslowska, who's the French kindergarten teacher, uh, who's just joined our team, and Miss Zara Ibrahim, also an early childhood educator. And each kinder cl kindergarten class team is led by a team composed of a teacher and early childhood educator, as you saw. And the team works together to plan and provide meaningful learning opportunities for the children and to create a positive, welcoming, and safe learning environment. And it really does take uh, a team of those, uh, of at least two educators in the class. Uh, because, you know, all children's learning and de development occur in the context of relationships. Relationships with other children, with parents, and other family members and educators, and the broader environment. The importance of early experiences for a child's growth and development is recognized in the design of the kindergarten program which starts with the understanding that all children's learning and development occur within that context of relationships. And of course, parents and educators play an important role in a child's education because of that of forging those very important uh, trusting relationships. The OCTSB's kindergarten program is a two-year program. All of our kindergarten classes are combined grade classes, meaning year one and year two, that's formerly known as JK and SK, students are grouped together. All classes engaged in learning based on the kindergarten program 2016 with a 50% of their instructional time in English and 50% in French. So if your child will be four or five years old by December 31st, 2021, they can start kindergarten in September, 2021. Considering there's a broad range of development with children at this particular age, by combining classes together, children are able to develop at their own rate, flowing freely between the expectations of the two-year program. If a child requires time to reinforce their learning, their two-year program offers them opportunities to do so. If they require less time to reach proficiency, they can easily move on to more challenging explorations. The program aims to provide every child with the support they need in order to develop self-regulation, health, well-being, and a sense of security, emotional and social competence, curiosity, and confidence in learning, and respect for diversity of their peers. So our program is, uh, has several components but we start with the play-based learning. I want to talk a little bit more about that. Children are full of natural curiosity, 
and they explore their curiosity with play. In our kindergarten program, teachers and early childhood educators structure play to create learning moments, making it purposeful. Our kindergarten program provides children with educational activities appropriate for young learners, taking into account their physical, intellectual, social, and emotional needs. Their world is one of curiosity, exploration, and imagination. Children investigate and develop an understanding of their world through play. Educators observe the children's social, emotional, physical, and intellectual interactions within a classroom setting, assessing their stages of development aligned with the curriculum and supports and encourages experiences to further their growth. I talked about team approach earlier. I want to elaborate a little more on that as well here. Each kindergarten class is led by a team composed of a teacher and early childhood educator, also called ECEs. I may use that term later on in the presentation. So the team works together to plan for and provide meaningful learning opportunities for the children and to create a positive welcoming and safe learning environment. On average, classes have 26 students. Although depending on enrollment, class sizes can range anywhere from a crop, a prop, approximately 13 to a maximum of 28. This year is 29 as the cap for kindergarten. Next year is 28 as uh, mandated by the ministry. At Art Street, uh, we currently have uh, our two kinder classes. Uh, we currently have uh, 15 and 16 students in each of those uh, kinder classes. The day uh, is comprised of 300 minutes of instructional time. Students are assessed and evaluated based on their growth in relation to overall program expectations from the four frames of learning in the kindergarten program. The four frames are belonging and contributing, self-regulation and well-being, demonstrating literacy and mathematics behaviors, and problem solving and innovating. The OCDSB offers a two-year full-day 50-50 bilingual kindergarten program. The program provides all students with the opportunity to develop skill in English and French. All of our kindergarten classes incorporate 50% French language instruction. This means that children will experience the program equally in French and in English providing a rich exposure to both of Canada's official languages. Our program is designed for children of all languages. Unlike early French immersion, which begins in grade one, the bilingual kindergarten program is focused on providing our youngest learners with a rich play and inquiry-based experience facilitated by both English and French educators. Teachers and ECEs implement the program as laid out in the Ontario curriculum document called the Kindergarten Program 2016. There are no overall or specific expectations that set fixed outcomes for French language acquisition for the end of the two-year program. Each child will grow and develop their receptive and expressive communication skills in both languages in a way that is unique to them. This reminds me of uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, indicating that everyone will learn in their own way and in their own time. And the kindergarten program offers students ample time and opportunity to really develop their skills uh, within the time frame that they need.
I'm going to uh, move deeply here into uh, the different four frames of the of the program and elaborate a little bit more on each frame. So in the kinder program, the four frames or broad areas of learning are used to structure the thinking about learning and assessment. So you see all the four frames uh, here, and they are designed to support an approach that aligns with the way children's learning naturally occurs, and that focuses on aspects of learning that are critical to young children's development. The frames reflect the in integrated way in which learning occurs during children's play and inquiry in kindergarten. The four frames align with our four foundational conditions needed for children to grow and flourish. Belonging, well-being, expression, and engagement. These foundations or ways of being are central to the pedagogy outlined in the early learning resource. How does learning happen? They are conditions that children naturally seek for themselves and they apply regardless of age, ability, culture, language, geography, or setting. Oops, apologies. I just wanna bring your attention to the figure here. So the outer circle, the four frames of the kindergarten grow out of the four foundations for learning and development set out in the early learning curriculum framework, which is the in the inner circle. The foundations are essential to children's learning in kindergarten and beyond. The frames encompass areas of learning for which four and five-year-olds are developmentally ready. I'm going to uh, move uh, further in and, um, and talk a little bit more about the, the, each uh, of the four frames. Belonging and contributing. This frame encompasses children's learning and development with respect to their sense of connectedness to others, their relationships with others, and their contributions as part of a group, a community, and the natural world their understanding of relationships and community, and of the ways in which people contribute to the world around them. The learning encompassed by this frame also relates to children's early development of the attributes and attitudes that inform citizenship through their sense of personal connectedness to various communities. Our understanding of self-regulation and well-being uh, this frame encompasses children's learning and development with respect to their own thinking and feelings and their recognition of, of and respect for differences in the thinking and feelings of others, regulating their emotions, adapting to distractions, and assessing consequences of actions in a way that enables them to engage in learning. This is also where we uh, further understand or develop their physical and mental health and wellness. In connection with this frame, it is important for educators to consider the interrelatedness of children's self-awareness, sense of self, and ability to self-regulate. The role of the learning environment in helping children to be calm, focused, and alert so they are better able to learn. What children learn in connection with this frame allows them to focus, to learn, to respect themselves and others, and to promote well being in themselves and others. Moving on to demonstrating literacy and mathematics behaviors. This frame encompasses children's learning and development with respect to communicating thoughts and feelings through gestures, physical movements, words, symbols, 
and representations, as well as through the use of variety of materials. It also encompasses literacy behaviors evident in the various ways they use language, images, and materials to express and think critically about ideas and emotions as they listen and speak, view and represent, and begin to read and write. We also explore here mathematics behaviors, which is evident in the various ways they use concepts of number and pattern during play and inquiry. They access, manage, create, and evaluate information and, exper and experience an emergent understanding of mathematical relationships, concepts, skills, and processes. They also have an active engagement in learning and a develop, developing love of learning, which can instill the habit of learning for life. What children learn in connection with this frame develops their capacity to think critically, to understand and respect many different perspectives and to process various kinds of information. When talking about problem solving and innovating, we understand that this is where children are exploring the world through natural curiosity in ways that engage the mind, the senses, and the body. Making meaning of their world by asking questions, testing theories, solving problems, and engaging in creative and analytical thinking. The innovative ways of thinking about and doing things that arise naturally with an active curiosity and applying those ideas in relationships with others, with materials and with the environment. The learning encompassed by this frame supports collab collaborative problem solving and bringing innovative ideas to the relationships with others. In connection with this frame, it is important for educators to consider the importance of problem solving in all contexts, not only in the context of mathematics, so that children will develop the habit of, adapt, of applying creative, analytical, and critical thinking skills in all aspects of their lives. What children learn in connection with all four frames lays the foundation for developing traits and attitudes that they will need to become active, contributing, responsible citizens and healthy, engaged individuals who take responsibility for their own and others' well being. This is where you learn about how you will be informed of your child's progress. All kindergarten students are assessed for learning on an ongoing basis, and in these assessments are used to inform next steps. Assessment and evaluation focuses on growth versus achievement. That means educators support the growth of the child's learning in relation to the knowledge and skills identified and the overall expectations set out in the kindergarten program document. Feedback is provided to, stu to students and their parents also on an ongoing basis. Formal assessments in the form of a communication of learning template are completed as there's an initial observation provided in the fall, which is an opportunity for a parent teacher interview and a communication of learning provided at the end of terms one and two, which is late January, early February and June. But as I said earlier, there's an ongoing communication. And if parents are, who are encouraged to have an, an open communication with, uh, with their child's teacher, you will see, you will also observe that growth in learning in, this in your child uh, as they are acquiring um, more and more skills as they, they go through the program. Uh, so we also talk in this program, we talk about exposure versus coverage. 
Kindergarten teachers ensure that students are exposed to program expectations repeatedly over the course of the two years. Many of the program expectations are constantly being explored, worked on, developed by students through their independent play, guided interactions with educators, and direct teacher instruction. Much of our, so in my own personal experience, um, the time that I spent in a kindergarten class, either uh, as covering uh, for a teacher or supporting, um, a lot of the ideas that are explored uh, stem from children's curiosity and, um, and you know, with teachers wanting to provoke a thought. Uh, so many times, you know, you'll see if you have a chance to visit a kindergarten classroom, you'll see an object uh, laid out or, or an idea or a center and with no explanation provided, and this is an opportunity for the teacher to really spike the curiosity of the child. And it's in observing how the child is interacting with those objects or with that particular center that the teacher can really uh, uh, develop uh, a program and, and observe you, uh, your child's um, interest and growing interest, I should say, and growing skill as they uh, interact with within that, that center. Um, so while there are formal communication uh, about your child's progress that you will receive at the times that I've outlined, um, there is opportunity for ongoing um, communication about your child's progress. Uh, and again, uh, as you maintain an open and close uh, communication relationship with your child's teacher, um, you will have uh, you know, more ready feedback uh, more frequently. Talking about the extended day program here. Uh, so I just want to mention that um, you're not, please do not discontinue your current childcare arrangements prior to the receipt of confirmation and acceptance uh, in the OCDSB extended day program, or in some cases, a third party provider. So just uh, registering your child at a school that has an EDP program or a third party provider doesn't automatically mean that your child has a spot in that EDP or third party provider. A process needs uh, to be followed. Uh, so here you can see that the OCDSB operates the uh, extended day program uh, for ages uh, 3.8 years to 12 years, um, if there is sufficient interest within the school community. Um, and then those extended day programs are run either by the OCDSB or by a third party provider in partnership with the OCDSB. Uh, I've been in schools that have the EDP program and in those schools, it's, it's the ECEs who run, who are working in the day uh, kindergarten program, who also um, work in the EDP program, either in the morning or in the afternoon. In schools where it's a third party provider, um, it's, um, it's really that entity that runs that program. So the ECEs in the kindergarten program of that school are not connected with that third party provider. That's more of a separate uh, run uh, entity. Um, and so, uh, but I've also been in schools who have, who don't have EDP or a third party provider, which is the case at Arch Street uh, Public School. But I do want to go over the options that, that are available to you as this is a presentation uh, for OCDSB schools. Um, and so I, I do want to ensure that you have all the information that you need to help you make the right decision uh, for your child. So again, as I said earlier, registration for EDP is a separate process from the kindergarten. So it's not registering in kindergarten at a particular school does not automatically mean that your child is registered in the EDP or third party provider if this is something that you are uh, interested in. So 
so the extended day program is complementary to the core program and it's aligned with uh, it's also it's in order to provide a seamless and consistent educational experience for children. So this program is designed to provide before and after school programming for children registered within the school. The EDP program is an optional program that is offered for a fee, provided there is sufficient demand for the program and staffing availability based on maintaining ministry ratio requirements. The extended day program will operate from 7 a.m. to the start of the, of the school and from the end of the school day until 6 p.m. Parents may register their child in the morning, afternoon, or both programs. So there are options there. The fee for, uh, for the 2021 school year, uh, I want to say 21, uh, yes, 2021 school year will be in the range of $22.50 uh, $22 to $27 per day for both before and after school care depending on the amount of sessions a child is registered in per week. The fee for optional days of care, for example, PA days, March break, et cetera, is $35 a day. Before and after care fees will be site specific based on the start time of the school day and at the site. So extended day program fees are the responsibility of the parents and guardians. There is an option for subsidy, uh, but we've got limited financial assistance. A child care subsidy would be available to families that meet the criteria for eligibility. So parents will need to contact the city of Ottawa to apply for the subsidy by phone at 311. You can select here your language and press four as an option for daycare. Monday to Friday between 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Or you can go to the uh, ottawa.ca link. Extended day program that is run by a third party. So third party operators offer before and after school programming in a number of our schools here at the OCDSB. Primary difference uh, between the two programs is that they are governed by different provincial uh, legislations. And you can also register at the OCDSB uh, link provided. The Ottawa Student Transportation Authority, uh, OSTA, provides school bus transportation uh, as well. Um, and information uh, is available at uh, ottawaschoolbus.ca, uh, where you, you, know, you can get information about the bus stop finder, school bus delays, empty seat applications, and safety tips. And school bus transportation is available to all kinder students who live more than 0 0.8 kilometers from their school. Transportation is not provided to and from the extended day program. Uh, I do want to add a note here about uh, kinder students who take the bus. Um, OSTA provides each student who takes uh, the bus with a yellow tag uh, to be attached to their school bag. And this yellow tag is an indicator to the bus driver that this is a kinder student and should not be let off the bus without a parent uh, present at the bus stop. And if there's no parent present at the bus stop, then that student will be uh, will be brought back to the school, will not be let off the bus, will be brought back to the school, at which time the school will contact the family uh, to come pick him up, pick him or her up at the school. So this is a safety measure to ensure that, um, you know, our students are safe 
and uh, this is uh, an indicator, as I said, for bus drivers um, and and teachers are responsible. The school is responsible for providing that. So this is not something that you would need to ask about. This is as soon as your child is registered with the school and you've indicated that you require bus transportation, then this is uh, a tag that will be provided to your child and will be provided to your child on, the, on their first day of school. Uh, and or their first day where they take uh, they take the bus. And all of this information will be uh, shared with you uh, at uh, the kindergarten open house, uh, depending on which school you uh, register your child. Uh, the school will contact you to provide you with additional information uh, sometime in the spring in preparation for the September start date. Uh, so while all this information is very important for you to have now, um, you know, just as a heads up, but I do know it's a lot of information and a lot to process, but please rest assured, um, all this information will be provided to you directly uh, by your school um, administrative team. Uh, and or your child's uh, future teacher uh, so that you have all the information that you need to make an informed decision. What can you do to help your child prepare for this new beginning? There are many ways that parents can support their child prior to entering kindergarten to prepare them for the learning in a school setting. Ensure that your child has ample opportunity to engage in different types of play. Provide daily physical activities to help develop growth and fine motor skills. Talk and listen to your child. Make sure your child's nutritional needs are being met. Help your child with daily routines, such as getting dressed, feeding, toileting, cleaning up after activities, self-regulating their active and quiet play times. Read to your child, preferably daily. Select a variety of books of different length and different subjects. Relate the pictures to the story. This enhances language development and stimulates children's curiosity and imagination. Talk with and listen to your child about daily activities what he, she is doing, what you are doing. Strong oral communication skills will become a solid foundation for later academic achievement. Encourage other adults in your child's life to emphasize the positive aspects of school, such as new friends, a caring teacher, and opportunities to learn, grow, and have fun. Find out the teacher and ECE names and use them when discussing school activities. Recognize it is sometimes just as difficult for you to face a separation from your child as it is for your child to face separation from you. Take comfort from understanding that these feelings are normal and they will pass as you and your child grow accustomed to a new routine. Discover the route your child will travel to and from school and obtain information on walking distances. Several dress rehearsals will build your child's confidence and help establish safety conscious routines. Make sure the child walking to school is accompanied by an adult. Children on buses are met on arrival at and departure from school by the teacher or school supervisor. Children must be met by an adult when they are dropped off following their day at school. Visit the school, use the playground and apparatus. Develop opportunities for your child's exposure to music, rhythm and rhythm activities, which will help the development of reading skills. More on helping your child prepare. Accustom your child to consistent routines, such as getting up at, the, at a certain time, getting dressed and so forth. Help your child to develop fine motor skills. Fine motor skills are those skills involving the small muscles of the body 
and include activities such as drawing, cutting and gluing, as well as handling Play-Doh, building towers of blocks, stringing large beads on a string, catching on beanbag or large ball. Discuss personal safety, busing and strangers. Be sure children know their name, address and telephone number. Review the calendar with your child. Circle the day on which your child starts school. You may also wish to mark gym and library days, class trips, birthdays, and special occasions. Label, label, label. That is what you're going to hear about from your child's teacher. So I'm giving you a heads up now. Label all your child's belongings in an unconspicuous place. Indoor and outdoor clothing, shoes, boots, snack containers, drink containers, and backpack. Prepare your child for successful experiences. Provide opportunities at home with situations that challenge your child to manage alone when toileting, dressing, tidying, and eating. These self-regulation skills help children feel good about themselves and help them realize they can solve their own problems and be supported while doing so. There's, there are these here are more ideas on uh, how to um, support your child to, have, to help prepare them for, for this wonderful new beginning. Ottawa Public Health School Readiness webpage is a page that, uh, uh, that you see here that you want to visit. The School Readiness Pet webpage is an excellent resource to assist parents in preparing their children for kindergarten. The page contains direct links to tools and resources related to um, all these ideas that you see here. In the next few slides, I will uh, talk about, uh, you know, the program options that we have uh, here at the OCDSB. Our school board provides the 50-50 bilingual uh, program, as you see. After this, parents have a choice of which program their child will attend from grade one onward. And so, as I said, I'll provide more information on each particular program later on in the presentation. But you see the options here, English with core French grades one to eight, this is the case at uh, Arch Street Public School, but we are uh, a school for, uh, that's K to six. So the English with core French is offered at public, Arch Street Public School from grades one to six. There's also early French immersion, middle French immersion and alternative program. The program that is selected is a parental decision. This means that it is your choice, it's a personal choice, and all are welcome. Delph results have shown there is no difference in final outcomes for students enrolled in EFI, that's the early French immersion, versus MFI, that's the middle French immersion. But supports uh, are available in all the programs that we provide. At the elementary level, the following subjects are taught, are taught. The English program allows students to concentrate in English language skills. So this is the English program that we have at Art Street Public School. So English instruction for all subjects other than French, which is, you see, it's 200 minutes per week, but that translates into 40 minutes a day. Now, this is different from the kinder program. Remember, we talked about the kinder program being 50% English, 50% French. This is the English program from grades one to eight. 
So the program is available, as I said, from grade one to graduation. And the program is child-centered and stresses proficiency in all subject areas. In this program, English is the language of instruction for all subjects other than French. At the elementary level, the subjects are, that are taught in English are language, mathematics, science, and technology, social studies, which includes geography and history, health and physical education, and uh, the arts, as well as core French. That's where the 200 minutes slash 40 minutes uh, a day. A student who successfully completes the English program is expected to have a functional knowledge of the French language. Moving on to the uh, early French immersion program, EFI. And again, I do want to stress that kindergarten is not an immersion program. It's a, so it's a bilingual program where students learn within the expectations of the kindergarten program 2016 and interact with the French speaking educators half of the time and English speaking educators half of the time. So that's the 50-50 bilingual kindergarten programs. The early French immersion program provides students with the opportunity to become functionally bilingual through early exposure to French. This program begins in grade one. In this program, French is the language of instruction in all subjects other than mathematics in grade one and mathematics and English language arts from grades two to eight. In grade one, mathematics is the only subject taught in English. So a day in the life of a grade one student in the EFI program is they have all of the subjects in French and just one, uh, one hour of uh, math a day, but that subject is taught in English. Hence the 80% French, 80% of their day in French and 20% of their day in English. Students who successfully complete the EFI program and later enroll in a secondary level program, which meets the requirements to obtain the OCGSB extended French or French immersion certificate are expected to be able to communicate with ease and feel comfortable in their language community, English or French, and also accept employment, training or further education in either language. The Middle French Immersion Program, MFI. Students in the, in the English program for grades one to three have a foundation in French. Bilingual kindergarten program is 750 minutes per week of French. And grades one to three, they have 200 minutes per week of core French. In the middle French immersion, students build proficiency in French. So this program provides students with the opportunity to obtain a solid foundation in English language skills in the primary grades before starting intensive study of French. A student who successfully completes the MFI program and later enrolls in a secondary level program, which meets the requirements to obtain the OCDSB extended French or French immersion certificate, is expected to be able to communicate with ease and feel comfortable in their language community, again, either English or French, and also accept employment training or further education in either language. The open entry point for MFI is grade four. So they build a foundation from grades one uh, to three, and then uh, they, can, uh, they can extend that uh, as a grade four.
talking here about the DELF. So this is the grade 12 French proficiency test. In 2018-19, 88% of eligible students participated in the grade 12 proficiency test with a 96% success rate across test levels. So more than half uh, challenged the highest level of French proficiency. So the DELF defines six levels of French proficiency and it's offered to all students enrolled in the grade 12 French as a second language uh, course, either core or French immersion. And previous research here indicates that success rates on the highest level offered uh, at the OCDSP were not significantly different for students who had been enrolled in an EFI or MFI program in grade eight. And this here is to point out that there are different entry points uh, for uh, French instruction at the OCDSB, uh, having personally experienced uh, on a professional level um, the EFI program, as well as the uh, regular English program. Um, some students uh, relate better in certain times of their progress uh, to the French instruction. Uh, some may benefit with, uh, you know, from focusing on a specific language or area and then uh, enter that um, French instruction uh, later on, uh, while others uh, can manage, uh, can manage both. Um, we, you know, as professionals, uh, we understand there's a learning for all. We welcome all students at all levels um, of uh, the, you know, of their language proficiency uh, in any grade level. Um, but we just, through this presentation, we just want to ensure that you are aware that there are different entry points, uh, either through the grade one uh, with EFI, uh, or grade four with MFI, uh, or even later on as based on this information about the DELP, if, you're, if you do choose to enroll your, your child in the regular English program and later on feel that, uh, you know, they can, uh, they're ready to, uh, to delve more deeply into the French in instruction, then there is that opportunity uh, later on in their schooling. So lots of opportunities at the OCDSB where everyone is welcome. The alternative program. There are four elementary sites, Regina, Lady Evelyn, Riverview and Churchill. There is one intermediate site that offers uh, this alternative program, which is Summit Alternative. And the foundation of the alternative education philosophy is cooperation and teamwork. That's what uh, is emphasized in that uh, program. A commitment to innovative approaches to teaching and learning project-based learning with a balance between student-directed and teacher-directed learning, mixed age groupings, classrooms, uh, fostering collaboration, integrated curriculum stressing interrelation of all learning and subjects, family and community-centered school environment, collaboration with parents and community members, ongoing assessment and evaluation reduced emphasis on grading. So those are the, the characteristics that are found in many of the, uh, the programs at the elementary level across uh, the OCDSB. And together they are um, the, the characteristics that form the foundation uh, for that um, uh, alternative program. And in all uh, the other programs that I mentioned, uh, whether it's regular program, uh, EFI uh, or MFI, uh, those are offered at different uh, sites. They are not all offered at all uh, OCDSB uh, schools. 
for example, at Artreat, as I mentioned, uh, only the um, English regular program is uh, is offered. Uh, but again, uh, students do have the opportunity to move on to the MFI program um, uh, as of grade four. So even if they had been with uh, Art Street from kindergarten, they can do kindergarten at Art Street, grade one, grade two, grade three. And um, if the, you know, as a parent, you decide, yeah, my, my child is ready uh, for a more intensive French program and it's ready for the MFI, then uh, we can support you uh, with that transition and they can move on to another school in um, your neighborhood that would offer um, middle French immersion. And, um, at this particular time, uh, the program is offered at Featherston uh, Public School. That would be the, 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 the school that your grade four child uh, would go to leaving uh, friend, um, Art Street for MFI. Family Reception Center, that's another organization that I call part of our extended uh, family. Um, so, oops, sorry, I think I missed, oh, here's the information I wanted to share with you about the Family Recep Reception Center. So if you are new to Canada uh, and you have a school-age child and that English is not your first language, the OCDSB's Family Reception Center can assist you with enrolling your child uh, in school. The center staff will provide student assessment and guidance for English language learners and their families and can connect newcomer families with a multicultural liaison officer if needed. And so the multicultural liaison officer is someone who can support you in many ways uh, to access resources within your community and uh, to facilitate um, communication, uh, whether, you know, there's a, there's a language, uh, uh, language support needed at the MLI, uh, MLO uh, will support, uh, will support uh, in that. Uh, so if, uh, the information is uh, is here for for you to connect with them uh, for assistance. And um, but if you um, if you have a family member new to Canada and um, and who is in need of registering to a school, um, if you connect to the school, the school will refer you back to uh, the family reception center and will support to facilitate. Uh, your connection with the uh, FRC, Family Reception Center. We want you to register now. Register Registration is open for kindergarten in September 2021. Uh, so if your child will be four years old uh, by December 31st, 2021, uh, you can register for kindergarten. You can visit uh, the website uh, uh, posted right here to learn more about uh, our program and uh, a link to the online registration. Um, and then when you go on either the OCDSB website or particular school website, you will see uh, a green icon saying uh, register my child. You click on that and um, it'll prompt you to, uh, to follow through. I wanted to, uh, well, I also, before I move on, I wanted to uh, um, indicate student transfer application period. Uh, so the tr student transfers is, uh, so based on your address, when based on your address uh, in relation to the school, uh, you are required to register your child at that particular school first. Uh, but if for reasons, uh, family reasons, uh, childcare reasons, that school is not, does not fit your uh, schedule or does not meet the needs your family needs, then you will be required 
to uh, submit a student transfer application. And those applications uh, will be uh, assessed and reviewed between February 1st and February 16. Uh, so please uh, begin the registration process now, uh, start registering uh, so that if there are other, uh, if you've got concerns or you've got questions, uh, then uh, we would have time to uh, respond to your questions and point you in the right direction um, in case a student transfer application is needed and so that you are, uh, you make it in time uh, to fit that window. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, I wanted to share here a little bit uh, more intimate uh, about Arch Street uh, Public School. Uh, so I wanted to share some pictures and activities about a day in the life of an Arch Street kindergarten student. So here we've got activities, uh, students exploring uh, mathematics uh, activities. We see some patterning, we see extending a pattern uh, using natural uh, re natural objects uh, that they found in the yard and objects that they may have brought out, tools that they may have brought out. But we see here that, you know, they're using the outdoor space. Uh, outdoor learning is a very big part of uh, the kindergarten program. More inquiry and play-based uh, learning here as well. So we do want our students to explore uh, the outdoors as much as possible and make the learning uh, not really just for school, but really for them to see that there's learning opportunities uh, in uh, their environment. Uh, here, kids are exploring literacy, uh, exploring uh, poems, um, and uh, exploring letters, and writing notes to each other. Thank you for joining me tonight. I hope that you will choose to become part of the Arch Street community.